Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this video was recorded back on May 11th of 2020 and it's basically an overview of my current soldering progress. Primary, secondary loop layout, some ideas I had, and some things you'll see in the video if you've been watching my channel. I, I did end up changing later on. I did not use mixing valves and stuff like that. But either way, I thought I would upload it. thought you guys might enjoy it. So enjoy. So obviously here's my two units. Planning on having these for now set at 140. Um, we'll see, I can always adjust that. But as you can see here, reverse return. So this is my return coming in, feeds in each unit. And then there's my supplies going out on the left. This is all one inch here at this um, T, it bumps up to inch and a half comes over, I've got a temperature and pressure gauge on. And then what'll happen here is, this goes back down to one inch, and this will feed into my tank. So the tank will always get hottest 140 water right off the units to re to replenish uh, it quickly. Now here off this tee, we come down, we go through a one-way check valve, and we head into the domestic in of the domestic water side of the heat exchanger. So I have a shut off here and here as you can see after this check valve this is where my cold water will feed into the system. So any fresh water when the hot water is on this is where it's going to come in. So the only spot in the summer where there could be dead water sitting is, is um, in here. When this isn't, when the system isn't circulating. Um, so yeah, my cold, my cold water supply, my, my pump, there'll be a Taco 13 pump down here that will recirculate the tank, bring everything into the heat exchanger and out. This is all done. This is all soldered. It's all good. Um, out of the heat exchanger, I have another service port and another valve. So if I need to, I can shut these off and I can flush the domestic side of this heat exchanger without disconnecting anything. So down here, I have another temperature and pressure gauge. I have a spiro vent on this. So this is technically my primary loop. I have my expansion tank for the portable side of things. Come up to my 113. I left enough room here to put another one in. So if I need to, I could put two. I'll probably make a quarter inch piece of stainless steel, cut it out, sandwich the two flanges, and a second pump should fit perfectly here if I, uh, if I cut this off and solder a uh, male adapter on there. Should work fine. So that's my primary loop. My secondary loop, the supply exits out the top of the exchanger here, comes over, goes down, pressure relief valve is over there, comes down to my fill and purge, spiral vent, and my bigger tank for the radiant. Um, shut off, so I'll have a 90 on this, it goes down under, and I stuck a couple of purges back there. So this outer one is the supply and that will run up and the supply will come up high and it'll be out from the wall. Uh, it'll go up, the pumps will all be mounted up here, this will be gone because this is my existing tank list, this will all be out of here and my pumps will go over and then my my house radiant manifold is there. My garage and basement slab manifold is there. My snow melt manifolds will be right here. And then here's all the lines to all be tied in. So that'll be fun. So go out, go through the manifolds, come back. The return is going to be mounted right here. Return manifold. It will turn and go down into this back line. Again, I've, I threw another fill and purge. This is loose still, none of this is soldered. And that comes around and comes into the uh, radiant side of the heat exchanger. So <clears throat> that's kind of primary secondary loop. 
There's more going on down here. This is all domestic cold water in. Uh, my cold water line will come in. It'll come here. It'll either, it can either go to the mixing valve, which this will go out to my hot water supply, or it can go to fill the tank. Um, there will also be another check valve here, which is the return from my humidifier on my furnace. So, and then my recirc pump is probably gonna go right in here somewhere. Um, and then another line will run over to the, to the mana block over there. And that will constantly recirculate the hot water so that I, I end up with hot water pretty much to this point uh, during set times. So that's where I'm at. If you see anything that jumps out to you, please uh, let me know. Um, the top of the tank here will be an inlet. This will be my hot water outlet. This will come down and go back to the wall over there and it will feed into the hot side of the mixing valve. And then down here, this will be cold water fill. It'll be for flushing. Um, I'll have a ball valve on it and I can shut that off, shut off the incoming water and I can shut it off up here. I can flush the tank. I can do all that fun stuff. Um, as far as controls, each of these switches, the bottom outlet is switched and um, as you can see when it's on, it, it's blue and I can control these from my smartphone. The top is hot all the time. So the Tagagi will plug into here and this will go to my um, Aquastat for, or both of my Aquastats for the two radiant pumps, one for the slabs and one for the staple up. And then to those pumps, the snow melt is here. The top is hot all the time. This will run over just to the same thing, Aquastat and the snow melt pump. And then here, um, one of these is hot all the time and one of these is switched. The one that's hot all the time will be connected to my hot water tank where the element in this has been disconnected. Um, the thermostat that's inside is just gonna be used as a switch to turn on that Taco 13 pump. So when this thing gets below 125, it'll kick on that pump, which will kick on the system, and it'll quickly refill the tank with 140 degree water coming in from the tankless units. That could be going on at the same time as a call for radiant, and that's where I think two units could really come in handy as long as they talk to each other and play nice, and we'll see how that works out. Probably could have got away with one, but I, I feel better, but uh, I'm good, it's here, I'm, I'm happy, so we'll see how it works. I did link them together. Um, they are currently linked right now through the internals, so they, they do talk to each other. You'll only have one display and it'll all be talking. So all three um, zones, one for the one for the radiant staple up, one for the slabs, and then one for the um, snow melt are all going to have their own aquastats. So, and I'll use those aquastats all in parallel to control this pump. So, whenever any one of them is calling for heat hits below that bottom limit, it'll turn this primary pump on, fire the units, and it'll be my primary loop. My plan is no thermostats. I'm gonna let these pumps run continuous when they're on. So when the radiant switch is on, those pumps will be on and I'm gonna let the Delta T pumps do their thing. Um, as the room, as it's warmer outside and the rooms use less heat, there'll be less of a need and the pumps will slow way down. I still think I need the Aquastat because when they hit that lower limit, I'm gonna need something to tell this to turn on and provide more heat. So I'll still put the Aquastats in. I might have to play with their relationship. You know, if I change the temperature, the Delta T on the variable speed pumps, I'll probably have to change it on the Aquastat too, but I think it's gonna give me a lot of adjustability here. Um, so I'm, I, I think that's gonna work very well for the Radiant stuff. I'll head over to the bench and I'll show you what I'm planning for the, the mock-up or the makeup of the pumps here.
Okay, I'm over here at the bench, and here's kind of what I had in mind for the, the mock-up of what I'm going to mount on the wall. So as the return comes up, the return was the one in the back that's up against the wall. It will turn, and I will have my returns with valves, and it will just go across, and then I'll have another return with a valve here for the for so this will be like staple up this will be concrete and then this will be snow melt these are all one inch snow melts inch and a quarter because i'm splitting this over two manifolds um i think i went over the gallon per minute numbers for that size copper and i don't know what what determined me to pick one versus one and a quarter but I, that's what i ended up with um it, it's been so long now since i've done this shame on me um, i've started to forget some of this stuff and it's kind of why i'm making this video is to remind myself um so anyway returns will come up in the front they will be attached to the wall with split ring uh holders pretty pretty close and then the supply will be out from the wall that was the pipe that was out a little bit as it came up and i'm not going to put it in front of these i'll put it higher but it'll be out so if you if you i mocked this up kind of on its side here um if you look at this kind of like this way if you imagine that my wall is here and we're looking at it from the front this will be in the back this is my return and my return will run all the way up and and back to the manifolds so you know my return is just a return and now my supply will come up I'll have a, a shut off on the supply check valve on the supply um, I purchased one Viridian variable speed Delta T pump so these pumps will sense the supply and return temperature and they will ramp their speed up or down based on the delta t that you set so if i if i determine i want 110 degree water going to the staple ups i can, and i want you know staple up they recommend 20 degree delta t maybe 15 i i can set that on here i don't have to use thermostats in the house it'll just run and as the house uses more energy because it's close out colder outside this thing will ramp up and handle it as it gets warmer outside and the house uses less heat and the demand goes down, the return temperatures are obviously going to be warmer. This will slow down and, um, you know, it, I do believe it'll slow down to even nothing. Um, if it doesn't need to be on, it will, it will basically idle. So that's kind of my plan with these two variable speed pumps. I don't know that it's really necessary to have a variable speed pump on the snow melt. I don't know that I see the benefit of that even though they do market these as being good for snow mount because you could set the delta t and just let the pump to figure out um how much pump it needs to pump but you're talking two amps on one of these taco 13s plus these won't handle the volume and head i need for the snow mount so i think i'm just going to go with a 13 uh, another stainless steel um you know the stainless steel ones i can actually get on ebay cheaper than the cast iron ones so i'll probably just purchase another one of these and put that on the supply for the snow melt i will have an aquastat i have three of those digital aquastats um, and i think these are going to be awesome um, so i'll use these guys basically just like your aquastat to dial in the um return and then as any one of these needs heat it'll kick on the primary loop pump um the switches these two pumps will be on the radiant that'll be on the snow melt so i still can you know shut everything off just on my smartphone on the switch so what i and see is oh it looks like it's going to snow i'll go on my phone tap the button it turns on that switch for the snow melt pumps which energizes the pump and the aquastat and then the aquastat controls the primary pump um, this one will just run as long as that switch is on it'll just run same thing with these as long as that radiant switch is on it'll just run although these will vary themselves based on outside temperature not directly but heat loss to the building and everything else so i'm starting to get really excited about this again so i'm going to start soldering and doing stuff soon 
I can't wait to get this up and going. I never thought I'd say this before, but I really kind of can't wait till winter once I get this up and going because it's going to be fun. We're just going to have fun dialing this thing in. I, I think it's going to be a riot. And I'm almost there. I mean, you saw my progress, so I'm, I'm getting there. But uh, I've got all summer. I want to start working on it. So, yeah, I'll end it here. Thanks again. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you find these older installation videos useful and helpful. And if you like them, uh, shoot me a comment down below. Let me know. You can also click on the playlist here to go back and see the system actually completed and working. And I'll continue to upload all of these old installation videos. Thanks.